Welcome to the place where we can talk about TV. Let's talk about Marco Polo. But before I get to the review, I'd like to read you the critics' consensus from Rotten Tomatoes in the correct tone. An all-around disappointment, Marco Polo is less entertaining than a round of the game that shares its name. <laughs> no. You might also notice slightly to the right of that amazingly clever consensus, the gap between what the critics thought about Marco Polo and what audiences thought. That's pretty steep. So which side am I on? Let's do this. Marco Polo is a show brought to you by Netflix, about Marco Polo being left by his father to the mercy of Kublai Khan. The Khan takes Marco as his servant slash pet slash slave, and the show follows how Marco evolves in Kublai's court. The show is generally historically accurate as far as names and places go, but that's pretty much it. But Marco Polo is meant to be enjoyed as a show and not a documentary. So every time you point out some inaccuracy, just remember, everyone hates you. Right off the bat, you can see that a lot of work went into the very impressive sets and costumes, which do a good job in setting the atmosphere. Marco Polo is a surprising choice from Netflix because it's not really a show that you binge. The episodes don't usually end in cliffhangers and you probably won't have that feeling that tells you you absolutely have to watch just one more episode, just one more. The show is beautiful and immersive. It features stunning cinematography and some of the fight sequences are incredibly well done. The downsides actually come from the pacing and the actors themselves. The story in Marco Polo is not terribly original and most of the time it's actually pretty predictable. But again, the show doesn't make any effort to keep you at the edge of your seat. The story is driven mostly by characters and the decisions they make, so character development was extremely important here. But the show doesn't do a good enough job at making you actually care about any of these characters, so a lot of times you'll just find yourself kind of checking your phone and waiting for the next cool thing to happen. There are some strong performances. Benedict Wong as Kublai Khan did a really good job and was probably my favorite character, and Chin Han, although playing an extremely generic villain, was a very good and fun generic villain. To really enjoy this show, you have to just kind of go with it. Because if you start overanalyzing things like, wait, why did he do that? Or both of them are now just... Wasn't that guy just... Uh. You probably won't find good enough answers to keep you going. Something else that really bothered me was the accents. I get it that they have to speak English and everybody speaks English, even when it's supposed to be other languages. I fully accept that. I also get giving the characters an accent, even a ridiculously stereotypical one, just to give us a feel as to how they would really be talking. I get it, it's fine. But some of these characters kept shifting from some sort of Asian accent to something that sounded like Game of Thrones meets Spartacus. Two shows, by the way, that for better or for worse, committed to a certain type of speech. I would have words. They even kept doing this, this kind of handshake kind of thing. This might sound like nitpicking, but for me it was these types of things that drew me out of the experience, which wasn't very easy to get into in the first place because the default Netflix viewing experience is usually on a laptop in bed covered in snacks and self-loathing. Maybe that's just me though. But seriously, if you can watch this on a big screen, please do. So Marco Polo is impressive and immersive and provides a lot of good memorable moments and some strong performances, although the story itself is slow and kind of unoriginal. Bottom line, should you watch it? If you enjoy period pieces and can appreciate how good this show looks and are willing to roll with a few questionable plot points, you will enjoy this show. It is impressive enough not to be a waste of your time. Also, it's just 10 episodes, so that's one episode every weekday just before you go to bed, and then a short binge session during the weekend, and bam, you're done. Next show. So that's what I thought about Marco Polo. If you've watched it or are watching it, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have a recommendation for which uh, TV show I should review next, also let me know. Make sure you subscribe so we can talk about TV some more next time.